Hey there, it's showtime. <laughs> Hi friends. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. I'm Kristen Fagan. I'm here with Softlex Company for our first tutorial of the new year, 2023. Um, hello to some of you that are joining me. Hi, Jackie. She's so excited. And Melanie says Happy New Year. And Pam, great to see you guys. I am going to play with um, making three different bold statement geometric style earrings today. I love earrings and the last couple of years, you know, with all of the mask mandates, they've been a little harder to wear and it's forced me to think about other designs, but earrings are my favorite and I'm excited to actually kick off the new year with three bold and fun earring designs for you all. Um, who else is joining me? We've got a few more friends here. Hi, Emily, Sheila, Gail, Stacy. Oh, Melanie says, I look wonderful. Garen, happy new year. It is a rainy, rainy day here. And these curls love the rain. So my hair is feeling so happy. <laughs> and bouncy and curly today. Um, <laughs> hi, Jilla and Nancy, Rosalinda and Lydia. We've had a super rainy weekend. We didn't have, did we have rain on New Year's Eve? On Saturday, it was stormy, cloudy. I don't remember if we actually got rain. Maybe we did a little bit later in the day. And then yesterday it rained all day and today has been kind of coming and going. Um, <laughs> lots of love for the hair. It is a good hair day. You know, it's funny because a lot of curly hair girls say that they don't love the humidity. I'm from New York originally, lots of humidity. Um, and you come out to the desert and it's really low humidity. But I find for me, my hair really likes the humidity. And so whenever I go back home to New York, it's like super bouncy and curly. Or if I go to Florida or some just some place that has a lot of humidity, um, my hair is really happy. So <laughs> I'm glad it's a uh, it I'm glad it's not up and it's down today and we can all enjoy a good hair day. <laughs> I do certainly need the rain, Lydia says. Oh lovely, certainly you need the rain. It's been raining so much. Um, which is really, really cool because we are so used to so much sun here in Arizona that when we have rainy days, it just feels so cozy. It's like a snow day other places. Like you just stay in, you watch movies. And what I did is I cleaned and organized because I just wanted to get a kickstart in the new year. I cleaned my garage on Saturday, which really needed it. Um, and then yesterday I cleaned out my closets downstairs. I cleaned out all of the stuff in like the shoe closet. We would normally be like a coat closet somewhere else, but I mostly have tote bags and shoes and hats and towels. And I cleaned that all out and I cleaned out my laundry room. Um, yeah, it's just been like, organizing like crazy. I haven't made it into my office and my studio yet because this is upstairs and I just focused on downstairs. But I hope to do that this week and just like really kick off the new year, getting rid of stuff, organizing and just feeling like I'm ready to tackle life. <laughs> Yes, Melanie says, is that you, Thomas? It's Damien here with me on Mondays. Thomas is generally off on Mondays. He doesn't work Mondays. So Damien is here with me live helping out in the background. So happy new year to Damien. Um, Nancy's getting a ton of rain in Canada. And then it turned to wet snow, just enough to cover the ground. Happy new year, Becky. Hi, Sue. Hi, Joanne. Oh, Deborah says her 
thanks everyone for all of our prayers. We talked to you last week when your water and your heat were off. They are now back on. Oh my gosh, that is a lot to lose water and heat. So we're real happy to hear that you are back in action. Oop, the sun is coming out and I need to just move my, my curtain over a little bit. So I'm wearing a few pairs of earrings. Let me put my hair up for a second. We are gonna make, we're gonna make these. We're gonna make these. And we're gonna make, we're gonna make these. So three really fun designs today. Um, almost everything is from the Make-A-Wish kit with the exception of these little wooden pieces. We, um, we painted these together a couple of weeks ago. They were from one of the jewelry pop-outs that we had for sale over at softlexcompany.com. We've now sold out of all of these, um, so we, you can't get them at the moment, but we are hoping to bring in some new styles in the new year. Um, but if you did get this one, I think this one was called the Pura Contessa. Um, that is where I'm pulling the two components from that we painted. And we also did the mistletoe earrings from this little set. So if you happen to grab this, um, you'll have that in your, in your stash. If you didn't, you'll have to use some other component that you might have around or um, hold tight for when we get some new wooden little pieces back in stock. Looks fun. Exciting, Lydia says. Yeah, so a couple of things just to mention before we get going. We've got our first live sale of the year tomorrow, which is January 3rd, 2023 at noon Pacific time with Sarah over on the Softlex Company Facebook page. We do that in two parts. It spans a couple of hours. So we do first part, take a break, do the second part. And the sale is fantastic if you can join us live um, because some things are going to be limited supply and first come, first serve. But we do keep it open till Thursday. So you can shop with us if you're not able to make it live. You can shop with us anytime afternoon on Tuesday up until Thursday night. Um, and then we process all the orders on Friday. So that is going to be Mike Sherman's uh, private collection for that sale. And it'll be the first one of the year. We were supposed to do it last year, but on, I mean, last week, but unfortunately due to some weather conditions, we had to push it out till tomorrow. So please join us for that. On Wednesday, we've got a video with Sarah at 3 p.m. Pacific time on the Softlex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. We also have a special video with our friends over at Jesse James Beads. Sarah and I will be joining Sarah James. And that's also on Wednesday, right after Sarah's video, um, Sarah Ayler's video. That'll be 4 p.m. Pacific time. So stay tuned for that. That should be happening over on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. And then on Thursday, we are... Um, kicking off the first spotlight. We're doing a new thing over in the Great Beat Extravaganza where we're doing um, spotlight days instead of takeover days. And so the difference is the spotlight days will be every Thursday all year long, whereas the takeover days were sort of every day leading up to an event. Um, we found that in some cases it was, a, it was really difficult for people to spend the whole day doing that leading up to an event. So we came up with the idea of doing spotlight days, which are gonna be every Thursday over in the Great Beat Extravaganza. We have, um, I don't know, we have a calendar somewhere, but I don't think it's actually a published calendar. It's more just for uh, the collective to know who's doing what. So just stay tuned on Thursdays for something. <laughs> in the spotlight on over in the Great Beat Extravaganza. Softlex Company is kicking it off with the first one this Thursday. And Sarah Ayler and I will be live at 10 a.m. Pacific time with a coffee and craft wire, which has become sort of our little signature um, 
video that we do together for the Great Beat Extravaganza. Uh, so check that out. And then um, let's see, Melanie is saying, I already got the Jesse James Beads Galantine kit. I have to wait until your office is open so that I can call in to get the Softlex one. Don't ask. <laughs> For whatever reason, I can't purchase from your site directly. Oh, no. Yes, the staff is there today, Melanie. We are open. I'm sorry that you have to call us. Um, sometimes there's just some weird little blips that happen, I guess, right? And, um, yeah, we all voted and decided to take off on Friday. So everyone is back in the office today um, on January 2nd. Do and Lydia, is that just an hour every Thursday then? It's different for everybody. So just like the takeover days are different for everyone, this is kind of like whatever the company decides, us being Softlex or Allegory Gallery or Candy Cooper or Humble Beads, whatever they decide makes sense for them is what they're going to do. And um, sometimes that will mean that they'll come live a couple of times. Sometimes it'll just be one extra live in there. Maybe it won't even be in a live. Maybe it'll just be something, a video or something that they share um, to spotlight their, their company that day. So it's very fluid. It's a little free spirited um, and it's brand new. So there might be some kind of, working it out in the beginning of the year here. <laughs> but that that is the idea, is that someone will go live on Thursday or share something on Thursday into the Great Beat Extravaganza that features um, their company as a way of just having like a little bit of a spotlight or a highlight for what they're up to. All right. So like I said, it's still pretty new. It's totally like not even, I can't believe it's already happening this week. It's kind of not on my radar even. And um, we'll figure it out as we go along in 2023. But we're hoping that it brings a little more consistent engagement in the Great Beat Extravaganza group and um, also gives all of our companies uh, a little bit of an extra special day to highlight something that's going on specifically. Um, it also means that other companies shouldn't post in there on Thursday. So Thursday is going to be reserved for whoever is the spotlight company for that day. Okay. All right. Let's, um, let's, let's turn down to the beating table and see what we're working with here. I think I covered everything that I need to for this week. Damien, if I missed anything, just let me know. Excuse me. All right, so I'm opening up the Make-A-Wish Make -Wish design kit. We still have a handful of these available. I think we've got about 10 of the full kits left. So if you haven't gotten one or you'd like a second one, you can still grab that while supplies last. And like I said, everything except for these little components here um, and maybe some like head pins and jump rings. Everything else was included in, in that kit. We also have some of the Make-A-Wish bead strands left. I think we've got about 13 of these. And that is what I used in this design. We did the Star of David necklace a few weeks ago, and that used the Make-A-Wish bead strand, which is really, really pretty. And we still got a few of those left. And then we use those little fire polish um, that we have in blue, silver, and white to make these stars. And then on the video, I left this center blank, but afterwards I realized it really was the only bead I had left and it fit right in the center. So I just wire wrapped that right in the center. Pretty, pretty cool. We are making a donation for the Make-A-Wish um, design kit. I don't think Sarah's done it yet, but we are including anyone that purchased the kit 
up until December 28th, we're doing 10% of the um, proceeds to send that over to Make-A-Wish Foundation. So thank all of you that um, purchased and I'm sure Sarah will mention it in the VIB group when she's back. She's not back in the office yet today and she was off um, quite a few days last week for the holiday too. So I'm sure she will uh, get that taken care of. I think she wanted to do it before the end of the year. So she may have actually done the donation, just hasn't had a time to express it. But I feel like she wanted to do it before the year ended. So a few other new beads that we put online are these sweet little flowers. These came in the kit. So if you buy the full kit, you will get these in there. Um, we had a few extra and we loaded them up at softlexcompany.com. And I think we've only got like hmm, less than five of the little flowers left. These are the pieces of my bead mix. So this is the Make-A-Wish bead mix. And we have quite a few of these still left. So you can pick up that. You'll get it in the kit if you get the full kit. But if you just want the mix, you can grab just the mix. And the beads that we're gonna be using from the mix are two of these um, little bead frames. Those came from the mix and two of these five strand connectors. You should get four of those in the mix. And then lastly, actually not lastly, almost lastly, we've got these sweet little stars. Again, you could get this strand in the full kit or you can purchase the what we have left over. Um, we loaded them up on the website last week. Really, really cute. I use them in my Make-A-Wish necklace that we made on the reveal on Wednesday. So you get this fantastic, whimsical little fairy, little wish fairy pendant. This is only available in the kit in the Make-A-Wish kit. We don't have these online for sale other than that. And they say on the back, 1,000 wishes. This is from our friends over at Green Girl Studios. So we made this necklace together on Wednesday using beads from the kit, the fire polish strand, those little stars, some beads from the mix. These are from the mix here and that pendant. We've got these dagger beads. We're gonna use these in the earrings we're gonna to make today. And these only came in the kit. We don't have any extra strands of these. Um, so those were from the Make-A-Wish kit itself. And, and we're gonna use these beauties. I love these. So this strand also came in the kit. <laughs> It came with one, two, three, four, five, looks like five, five beads. You can buy this one separately while they last. We were down to just two strands of this as of this morning. So that one's going real fast. If we sell out of the strand, then the only way you can get that is in the kit itself. All right, so which, which earring are we gonna do first? Let's see. Maybe I'll do the daggers first because I started this one on the video on Wednesday and I was connecting the daggers with these little links that I created from Softlex Craftwire in 22 gauge. This is the non tarnished silver plated. But then one of you, I think it was Carrie, um, she said on the video, oh, I connected them with jump rings. And I thought, well, that was smart and way quicker. <laughs> so, 
So um, I, after the video, I went ahead and found some jump rings. I did have to kind of look through my stash until I found one that would fit through the hole on the little daggers. So if you're having trouble finding a jump ring to fit, the 22 gauge wire does fit through. But I did end up finding this one here in my stash and it fit through. So super quick and easy. And I think the general look is very similar. This one's got your daggers a little bit closer to the component. This one I feel like can be a little bit more elegant looking because it's a little bit longer, a little elongated. Um, but for the sheer ease, I really liked using the jump rings and that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do today. Oh, Melanie's getting all of her stuff figured out. <laughs> So glad to hear it. Let's see. Is that the same one? It looks a little bit different. Okay. So to open my jump rings, I'm going to use a bent nose plier or chain and a chain nose plier, or you could use two chain nose pliers. You're just going to twist it to the side to open it. You always want to twist to the side so you don't um, affect the circular or oval shape of your of your jump ring. I'm gonna add my dagger and go ahead and attach it to the first loop on my connector. Yeah, I thought jump rings were a good idea too. It just didn't even dawn on me at the time. And we've got our first, our first little connection. And I said, ooh, that whipped up real quick. And I didn't feel like, I felt like it looked, it looked great either way. So you're gonna end up using 10 daggers total five for each earring. And then I think you'll have one, two, three, four, you'll have five left. So you won't be able to make two pairs of earrings, but you can make one and then do something different with the other two connectors that you have in your kit. So how are you feeling about the start of a new year? I just totally love a fresh start. And that's one reason why I love when the seasons change, even though we don't have totally different seasons here. I like taking time to celebrate the change of seasons. I love full moons and new moons and paying attention to those cycles because I just love a fresh start. <laughs> How do you feel about it? It's been, I've been feeling very um, productive this weekend with all of this rain to get everything all cleaned up. And I'm sure it's because I wasn't feeling great for a good part of December and I didn't do a whole lot. It was like this burst of energy to just clean the house. <laughs> you know that feeling? I even had two cups of coffee yesterday, which is unheard of for me because it keeps me up. It keeps me up at night, even if I only have one cup in the morning. <laughs> but I was just like in that moving and grooving kind of vibe. Yes, Maria is saying you can make a multi-strand bracelet with the other two connectors. Perfect. 
Oh, Julie, yes, you've been loving the rain the last couple of days. It's just been so lovely. It just feels so good to have those cloudy days. So I put the connector on from the back this time. I slid up the back of my ear wire because there's this great little ball on the on the front, this little um little embellishment, but because of that, I couldn't get the connector to go over it. So you just slide up the back instead, and that works just fine. And there's our first pair of earrings. How cute are those? Dagger-tastic. Jan is asking, could you use multiple jump rings to make different lengths? Yeah, I think you could. They do naturally go in like a slight variation down and up just because of the direction of the connectors. Because the connectors are going to be higher up and then lower and then back higher up again. So it has a slight little dip, a curve. But if you wanted to make that more dramatic, then I think using different sizes jump rings would probably um, do that for you. Let's see. Lorena says she was always in Arizona to visit her mom. She lived near the border um, to Laughlin, but she passed and she hasn't been there all. Yeah, I've never been to Laughlin. That is definitely with the border of uh, Arizona and Nevada. I'm sorry to hear that your mom is no longer with us. Zakia says, oh yes, Daggertastic indeed. Got some crimp beads here. Let's do, let's do this one next since I've got it right in front of me. So this design is going to use one of these really fun organic shaped check glass blue beads, two crimp tubes, two, two millimeter crimp tubes. Um, a little bit of beading wire in the dark blue lapis color that came with the Make-A-Wish kit. And lastly is this little wooden, or big I should say, this big wooden component that we painted with the Ultimate Paints. I think we only have one color left of the Ultimate Paints. We're down to just a yellow color and there's only like one or two bottles of it. So. We'll be looking to replenish our colors and some new little pieces in the new year. We like to bring some in when they match um, one of our design kits. So we'll have to kind of take a look and see when that might fit in. Here is a 10 foot spool of the dark blue lapis Softlex medium 0.019 diameter beading wire that we're gonna use coming across really dark today on the screen but it's a lovely deep kind of navy blue so using my cutters I'm just going to trim off a little bit of wire And I'm going to grab my magical crimping pliers to use with my two by two millimeter crimp tubes. I'm going to feed the wire through my bottom drop component. And then I'm going to add the two by two crimp on one side and then feed my wire up through that crimp to make a loop.
And you want to leave some room for your component to move around. I also like to go and check what I did on my first pair of earrings to make sure my loops are consistent. If you get it too tight, then your little piece here, your little dangle piece might get stuck in a weird way. So we're gonna put that crimp tube right in the center of my crimping pliers. Give it a good squeeze. It's ravioli time. That pinched the four corners of that crimp tube. That's how you know you had it right in the center. You'll see that all four corners have that little pinch. And then you're gonna set it back into that notch. There's one notch, there's like a half circle on either side of this plier. So you set your crimp right back into that notch and then squeeze it down. And then I just rotate two or three times until I've got this nice little crimp ball. And if at any point it slides out of the center, it does sort of mangle it a little bit. So it takes some practice getting used to. But once you get it, it's just the best to have that nice little component there. Ravioli to meatball, <laughs> Marie has said. So now I'm going to slide on that nice big check glass bead. And then if you notice here, our loop on the bottom went from... Um, north to south, I guess you could say. And now this one, we want to go east to west. So just be mindful when you're putting your, making your loop that you want it to go in that direction. So I slide down my crimp tube and then I'm gonna feed the rest of that wire back through to make my loop. I kind of hold on to that crimp so that I can make sure I'm keeping it in the right direction, hopefully. There we go. And I also want to take a look at my top loops here. As you see, this one is way bigger than what I did there. I got pretty tiny on that one, actually. So I'm just gonna pull that tail down. Until the loop. Resembles. The first pair. And do know that when you go to crimp, it does scrunch down your loop just a little bit tighter. So just be aware of that too. And let me make sure I've got this on the right. Okay, once I'm ready, then I can go ahead and crimp. Take my flush cutters with that flat side all the way up to the crimp tube, trim it off. If you have any left over, you can kind of slide it into your, um, into your bead too. And then we just add our ear wire. Let me see where my ear wires are. You do get, I think it's four ear wires. Oh, here's one. You do get four ear wires with your kit, but if you need extra, which you probably will, you can find more of them over at softlexcompany.com. And again, I'm just gonna slide it up through the back since I made a very small dainty loop. Did I put this one on backwards? Yeah, I did. 
I put that one on backwards. I do that all the time. I was even thinking I should probably paint both sides, but but I didn't do that yet. There we go. It's like, even if I try to put it on the right way, I always do it backwards the first time. <laughs> Jan is asking, will the crimper stop working over years of use? I don't think so. I've had mine for probably three years. Um, and it hasn't stopped working. So not that I'm aware of. Would it break down and change? <laughs> Nancy went to the kitchen for a moment. She's having ravioli. <laughs> Have ravioli sales increased because you guys get hungry during watching these videos? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> so here's earring design number two. I love this one. And I think what I'll probably do is paint both sides. So this way, if it flips around at all, um, that'll be okay. There we go. All right. So now we're on to earring three. And I was thinking with this one, it would be fun to make it asymmetrical. So I, since they're very similar in size, I started with the blue on the bottom, then added the frame and this white bead from the mix, um, all on a head pin. Maybe we'll do it the opposite way for the next one. So I've got a head pin here and it is, let me look at the size, two inches. So it's a two inch long head pin. And I need one of those white beads from the mix. So what I'm gonna do is just place that inside the frame, line up the holes best I can. I could go through that one and then go up through the top. Oh, Jan says, must be the operator. Maybe just something changed in how you're doing it um, along the way. Are you getting, are you smashing the crimp a little bit or is it just not holding? Um, what's different? Isn't that cute? So you can do them both in the same direction if you want to. But I thought it would be really fun to do them in opposite directions. Do a little asymmetrical design here. So we've just got a little bit left at the top. Let me see what the actual measurement is on that. A half inch. Just gonna turn it. Whoops, went a little too far. Just wanna do that like a 90 degree turn, just like so. And then I'm gonna use my round nose pliers to make a little loop at the top. And I'm probably go in about about there on my plier, grab it from the end and I'm gonna roll it over until I've got my loop. Then using your chain nose or your bent nose pliers, just twist that loop open to the side and we can attach our ear wire.
and then grab a hold of that and turn it back down. Or you can open up the ear wire. Either way would work. Super fun. Jana's saying she can do one right and then the very next one doesn't hold. So it looks okay, but it's not holding. Is that what I'm understanding? Oh, I gotta make this tighten here as well. Um, maybe, maybe you wanna try adding, you know how sometimes you have to have two, um, two strands of medium diameter going through a crimp. So either if it's a loop or a circle, but maybe you wanna try adding a third. I don't know. Um, so there's two, right? Going through like a loop like that. And then let me just grab another piece. you could feed another little piece of wire through and see if that helps you to hold. You'll end up just trimming it off, but getting that third wire in there, give it a squeeze and then, and then you can trim it off. Maybe that'll give you a little bit extra little extra oomph inside of the crimp to hold it for you. That's, that's an option to try and see or practice with and see if you're having any trouble with that. The other thing I would say is if you only crimp it in one direction and don't do the 90 to, don't do the second direction well, it is gonna be loose. So if I were to make a, a loop, And, oh, knocked out my crimp here. If I made myself a loop here like that, and I just crimp it the one time, so I make my ravioli, that time it held pretty well. But usually at this point, because I'm showing it to you, right? Usually at this point, you can slide it a little bit up and down. So if you go back in 90 degrees and place it back in and you don't get a good connection on your second, um, on your second one, I can see how that might not hold very well. So yeah, Maria is saying, I think Nile often uses scraps for the third piece. I know that he is the one that said it on a couple of his videos. And so now I just, I haven't had that issue, but I thought, you know, if he feels like three is helping him, then maybe three strands will help some of you out there um, if you're struggling with getting it to really hold on to the wire. It's just like a little extra step, but... Um, it's a little easier to do that extra step than it would be to restring it all, right? <laughs> so I'd give it a try and see if that kind of helps out with the situation. All right, there we have it. Three fun, bold designs for the new year. I'm gonna put them on and let you guys see what they look like on. How does that sound? Since I love, I love earrings. So here's the last one we made. I'll have to pull my hair back for you to see. <laughs> I feel like the blue really shows up on the video when you're looking at it this way too. How it looks a little bit more in real life, kind of gets dark. Well, there's design one or three rather, since it was the last one we did. And you know what I noticed, which is really funny? I think the way my ears were pierced when I was young, they go like two different ways. 
like one faces out and one faces a little more sideways. Um, see how this one's like totally facing out the earring. And then I think every time I put it on this side, it faces sideways. Isn't that funny? That one's, yeah, so you could see it starting to turn. So like this one faces to the side. I never, did you guys, I would have never known if I wasn't trying on earrings all the time to get a picture of them and stuff. But I think that's a good reason why I should probably paint the back sides. So here, here are these. So fun. And then lastly, I feel like these little dagger earrings would be something I'd wear all the time because they could go with so many different things. And aren't they cute? I feel like they're so cute. And these have so much little jingle jingle. Oh, Maria says that happens when one piercing is lower than the other. That must be what happened. And it's funny because I'd always be like, now I have to try if to see if I like an earring. I have to try it on both ears to see how it lays. Because before it would be like, oh, this one always lays better. The one on the right. And then I would go with it. But then I realized, oh, it's just how my ears are. Terry says she's not sliding down that slope. I didn't know it was a thing till just recently. And sorry if I now make a <laughs> make you all aware of something that was not, not on your radar before. <laughs> but I thought it was really funny when I figured it out. I was like, no wonder I always like earrings on this side better. And it's because I like the way it lays on that side. <laughs> Who knew? But I guess in theory, it's showing me with having two slightly different ear holes, it's showing me like how it would look two different ways for two different people, right? We can put a positive spin on it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Terry says she spent years comparing her eyes and her nostril sizes. Well, you know, like our faces are not symmetrical. They're not supposed to be, and it's weird if it was. So they shouldn't be the same size. They shouldn't be the same space. Everything is going to be a little bit different, and that looks natural, and that looks pleasing to us. If we were to have it exactly the same, I think it would actually feel um, really strange. <laughs> it, might not, it might not look as pleasing. <laughs> Becky doesn't have her ears pierced. You know, that's a good point. I wonder, um, do you ever make like clip-on earrings? My grandma always wore clip-on earrings. That was, she just, she never had her ears pierced. Um, I don't really think about it, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that never got them pierced. <laughs> well, this was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed these three bold statement geometric earring tutorials for the kickoff of the new year. Um, we have a lot planned this week. We've got a live sale tomorrow. So I'll see you over there. Uh, it's Mike's sales. It's always a lot of fun to see what new treasures we find in Mike's collection. Everything is um, limited and first come first serve starts at noon Pacific time over on the Softflex company Facebook page. Then you'll catch us with two videos on Wednesday. We've got Sarah Ayler at 3 p.m. Pacific time on the Softflex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. And then Sarah Ayler and me um, with Sarah James of Jesse James Beads on at 4 p.m. Pacific time over on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. And then Thursday, Sarah and I will be live in the Great Beat Extravaganza group. So if you're not in that group yet, please join us over there and also like the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook page. We'll be live at 10 a.m. Pacific time with coffee and craft wire. All right, lots of love to you. Happy 2023. Wishing you lots of love, happiness, health, prosperity, and of course, creativity 
in the new week. Yeah, we're coming back with a, <laughs> Lydia says busy week. We're coming back with like a rocket. <laughs> We've all been rested up, had our time off, and um, we're kicking in the new year with a very busy week. So we'll see you all. Uh, we'll see you all Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Love you. See you again on Monday next week for a new episode of Free Spirit Beating at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Bye, everybody.